Hey you guys, I hope you enjoyed chapter one and we're gonna move right on into chapter two today. This is home decorating. When Caroline walked down the hill behind their house with Beth and Eddie the next day, she was thinking about the special assignment Miss Applebaum had given the class. Caroline didn't wanna just do any old thing she had never done before. It had to be something great. Her sister suddenly stopped before crossing the bridge. What's wrong? Caroline asked. Get a look at them, Eddie exclaimed. Caroline's gaze followed her sisters across the river to where the Hatford boys were waiting for them on the other side, their faces stretched into wide, toothy grins. They look like they did when they brought a worm over on Thanksgiving and passed it around the table with the turkey, said Beth. They look like they did when we had that snowball fight last winter, said Eddie. But Caroline thought the Hatford boys looked like they did when they had tried to toss her in the river or locked her in the tool shed or cornered her by the fence in their backyard. Well, whatever they're up to, they're just dying to tell us about it, so we might as well get it over with, said Beth. The girls started across the swinging footbridge. Guess what? chortled Jake as soon as they reached the other side. I can't imagine, said Eddie. You're going to move away, I hope. Leave Buckman? Ha! Don't you wish, said Jake. The Bensons are coming back, said Josh. For spring vacation, said Wally. They're going to stay with us. And we're going to run rings around you, boasted Peter. Eddie's eyes narrowed and her upper lip began to curl. Oh, you are, are you? You and who else? All five Benson brothers, that's who, said Wally. Bill, Danny, Steve, Tony, and Doug. Ha! We're so impressed, Caroline hooted. I can't wait to meet the mighty Bensons. They're all you guys ever talk about, said Beth, as they trooped off toward the school. The older ones made sure that Peter, as the youngest, was walking in front of them in case the cougar was lurking nearby, waiting to grab the smallest, weakest one of the bunch. <sighs> well, wait till they get here. We used to have more fun than a barrel of monkeys when they were around, said Jake. More fun than howling outside our window when our folks were away, asked Caroline. More fun than wolfing down the pumpkin chiffon pie mom sent over for your mother, asked Beth. More fun than demolishing our snow fort out on the river? So, what are you going to do with your Benson buddies? Run the town? Lots of stuff, said Wally. Name one thing you can do with them that you can't do with us, said Beth. Uh, just stuff, said Jake. Ha, said Eddie again. After the girls got home that afternoon, they told their mother that the Bensons were coming back for spring vacation. Oh dear, she said, I hope they don't want to see inside the house. I really haven't had time to clean it properly the past couple of weeks. Caroline took off her jacket and hung it on a hook by the door. Why would they want to see inside the house, she asked. Because it's their house. We're only renting it, remember? Maybe they'll want to be sure we're taking good care of it. I don't know. I suppose it would be polite to invite them over. Upstairs in Beth's bedroom, Eddie looked at the racing car wallpaper and said, I've got a wonderful idea. Just in case they do want to snoop around up here, let's be ready. How? asked Caroline. You know what those guys are afraid of most, I'll bet? That will turn their bedrooms all around. Let's go out and find all the girly stuff we possibly can and put it up just for spring vacation. Beth and Caroline laughed out loud. Frilly lampshades, china dolls, bows and ribbons and ruffles and lace. When those guys get a glimpse of their rooms, it will be heart attack city for sure. They went back downstairs. We're going downtown, Mom, Eddie called. Back in a little while. All right. But stay together, Mrs. Moy called from the dining room. Keep Caroline between you and make sure you're home before dark. The girls put on their jackets and went down the sidewalk to the bridge connecting Island Avenue to the business district. Once on the other side, they passed City Hall and the police department, the bank and the hardware store, and continued past the Dairy Queen. They opened the door to the wallpaper store. Eddie did the talking. Do you have any leftover pieces of wallpaper we could buy that won't cost very much, she asked the owner. Well, not enough to paper a room, I'm afraid. Just odd pieces. What are you looking for exactly? Something to go in a girl's bedroom, Eddie told him. <clears throat> Look in that barrel back there by the stock room, the owner pointed. You're welcome to anything you find in there at a dollar a roll. The girls found the barrel with an odd assortment of wallpaper rolls sticking out the top. Ballet slippers, said Beth, unrolling one of them. It was a pale blue paper with pink ballet slippers pointed at various angles and a lavender ribbon connecting one of the others. 
Eddie rummaged them among the rolls until she found one that had pink hearts against a white background with the word love in red on each heart. Oh, we've got to get that one, said Beth. It will drive them absolutely nuts. Caroline had not found anything yet for her room, and her sisters helped her hunt until they came across a strip of yellow paper with china dolls on it, each one dressed in a fancy costume and holding a tiny teddy bear. The Malloys could hardly keep from laughing out loud. How much? Eddie asked at the counter. Tell you what, all you've got here are bits and pieces. What if I said a dollar will cover the lot? Sold, said Eddie. Next stop was the dollar store. There they found several bushel baskets of marked down merchandise. A little sold, a bit worn, but good enough for their purpose. They spent $3.50 on ribbon, lace, bows, hearts, sparkles, spangles, and beads. For two evenings, the girls worked in their rooms carefully fastening the strips of wallpaper to the wall with straight pins. When they were done, the room with the racing car paper had a strip of hearts and ribbon down the middle. The room with the football wallpaper had a panel of ballet slippers, and the last room, which had been decorated with wallpaper full of marching toy soldiers, now had a strip of china dolls all along the window. Every picture in every room had a ruffle around it. Every lampshade was trimmed and laced. Every bedpost had a bow attached. There were beads hanging from light fixtures and sparkles and spangles glistened on every mirror. The girls went from room to room admiring their handiwork. And you can see right there in the corner, one of the girls is putting some lace around the lampshade. Isn't it awful? Breed Daddy pausing in the doorway of her own room. Atrocious, Beth agreed. Do you think we can stand it for a whole week? But Caroline rather liked the idea of sleeping in the middle of all this stuff. It was almost like being on a stage set, surrounded by artificial walls and windows. If Caroline had her way, she would spend the whole week on vacation pretending to be on stage. Every person she met would be a character in a play. She, of course, would say her lines perfectly. How do you do, Mrs. Hatford? Isn't it a splendid, splendid day? Or... Oh, my poor darling Peter, to be orphaned at such a young age. She would cry, she would laugh, she would rage, she would, yes, love. And when her performance was over, the audience would give her a standing ovation and throw roses at her feet. After all this work, those Bensons better want to come over here and take a look at how we're keeping their rooms, said Beth. If they don't, we'll have to lure them here, said Eddie. We didn't go to all this work and expense for nothing. Caroline was quiet for a moment. If we're doing all this work to annoy the guys, what do you suppose they're up to to trick us? But Beth was thoughtful too. What if they turn out to be nice? Ha! All we've heard since we moved to Buckman is the trouble we'd be in for if the Bensons came back. The wonderful Bensons, the best friends the Hatfords ever had. I'm tired of listening to the guys talk about the mighty Bensons. I can't wait to meet them, and I guarantee that whatever they dish out, we can take and then some. End of chapter two. Chapter three is Bill and Danny and Steve and Tony and Doug. See you tomorrow.